mga kapatid mga magigiting na anak ng bayan ang inyong pagparito ay pagpapakita na hindi kayo nasisindak sa napipintong pangalit Andres Bonifacio Masun Taga Maynila Anak ng tundo Este es el ejemplo Wala na magkaroon ng pag-aalsa sa Cavite, naging lubhang mapaghinala na ang mga Kastila. Ang digmahang ito ang maglilikha ng walang tilang pagluha ng ating mga asawa. Manimal, may araw din kayo. na mapangani para sa tinatala mo ang maghihintaan. Oh, Supremo, oras na po ng pagpupulong. Hindi sumusuko ang ating mga kapananit. Ang tagumpay sa kabite ay pagpapakita na kaya natin lupigin ang pwersa ng Espanya. Ang digmaang ito magdadala sa atin sa mahabang parang ng paghihingalo. Punitin po ako sa kalayan! Punitin! 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 Lagi ninyong pakatandaan na ang kadahilanan ng ating pagbuwis ng buhay ay upang makamit ang matagal na nating minimithing kalayaan mula sa paggustay at pagkaalipin! Don Andres, kung ano man, kung sino man, handa akong mamuno o sumunod hanggang sa dulo ng buhay. Kaya siya halik na malugmok. Ipuli ng lahat ng inyong galit. Pero wala siya lalaman. Wala siyang kasalanan. Maawa kayo sa kanya. Wala siyang kasalanan! Bilang gabong siya nag-aalab ng puso. Mang sigwa ay may paghupa. Ano mang kadiliman ay dadaigin ng pagbubukang liwayway at magbabayad sa bayan ang may pagkakaputang tumating na. going to discuss about the case study for where did the cry rebellion happen together with my group mates Alfamia Cachillar, Angeline Sarmiento, Angeline Isabel Lopez, Joshi Bed Miranda, Karen Antonio, Kathleen May Sacarias, Cristel Ann Buminlag, Regine Perez, Raisa May de los Santos, Rose J. Balliares, Stephanie Gervasio, Vanessa Rosario, and Vanessa Terrado. Did the cry of rebellion happen? Momentous events hit the Spanish colonies in the late 19th century, including the Philippines. Filipinos similarly declared their rebellion against the Spanish colonial government. All these cries were milestone in the several colonial to nationalist histories of the world. Journalists of the time referred to the phrase El Grito de Rebellion or Cry of Rebellion. To mark the start of these revolutionary events, identifying the places where it happened. The term cry is translated from the Spanish El Grito de Rebellion, or what we call cry of rebellion. 
El Greco de Rebellion strictly refers to a decision or call to revolt. It does not necessarily connote shouting unlike the Filipino cigar. In the Philippines, the cry of rebellion happened in August 1896, northeast of Manila, where they declared rebellion against the Spanish colonial government. In, th in this picture, it symbolized the term determination of the Filipinos to fight for independence even into death. These events are important markers in the history of colonies that struggled for their independence against their colonizers. This is the most important event, a weakening and proud sense of nationalism for a great generating of Filipinos to come, and vitalize the unity of the Filipino people to both choice for independence. Prominent Filipino historian Teodoro Agoncillo emphasizes the event when Bonifacio tore the cedula or taxi seat before the Catipuneros who also did the same. Ayon ka prominent Filipino historian, Teodoro Agoncillo, nagumpisa daw ang cry of rebellion simula nung pinunit ni Bonifacio at ang mga Catipuneros ang kanikanila mga cedula. Ito daw ang hudyat ng pagumpisa na cry of rebellion. Some writers identified the first military event with the Spaniard as the moment of the cry for which Emilio Aguinaldo commissioned Himno de Balintawak to inspire the renewed struggle after the pack of the Piyak na Bato field. Ayon naman sa ibang mga writers, ito naman ay tinagurian nilang cry of Balintawak dahil ito daw ay isang pakikipaglaban sa mga Espanyol o Pastila. Si Emilio Aguinaldo naman na ating pinakaunang presidente, nagutos siya na may magsulat ng isang kanta na magbibigay motibasyon sa mga kawal dahil ang pack of biyak na bato ay hindi na isa katupad. Ang kantang ito nga ay nag Ang kantang ito nga ay pinamagatang himno de Balintawak. Hiniling ito ni Emilio Aguinaldo kay Maestro Julian Felipe. Maestro Hiniling ito ni Emilio Aguinaldo kay Maestro Julian Felipe. Ang dahilan kung bakit ito hiniling ni Emilio Aguinaldo ay upang ang mga Pilipino nakikipaglaban noon ay masiklab nito ang bawat kanilang mga damdamin at gawin itong motibasyon sa kanilang mga kaaway. Makikita sa picture ang monumento sa mga bayani ng 1896 Inilagay ito sa intersection ng EDSA, pati na rin ang Andres Bonifacio Drive. Ang monumentong ito ay inilipat sa UP Diliman or Universidad ng Pilipinas taong November 29, 1968. At mula noon ay ipinagdiriwan at mula noon ay ipinagdiriwan ang cry of Balintewak every 26th of August. Good afternoon everyone. Before I start my report, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Vanessa Rosario from Group 4. My topic is all about different dates and places of the cry. The warriors of the cry give different dates and places. The first account was written by Lieutenant Oligario Diaz identify the cry to have happened in Balintawak on August 25, 1896. Lieutenant Olegario Diaz is a Spanish commander of the Guardia Civil veteran of Manila who investigated to this discovery of the Katipunan, also included in his first official report, findings on the side and the date of the first rally of the revolution. August 23, 1896, Guardia Civil Attack August 25, 1896, Big Meeting, the first cry of Balintawak August 30, 1896, Uprising to Defend People's Freedom The second account was written by Chudoro Calaw, Filipino historian Marks the place to be in Kangkong, Balintawak on the last week of August 1896 Teodoro Calaw 
was a Filipino color legislator and historian. He was born on March 31, 1884. The third account was written by Santiago Alvarez, a Katukunero and son of Mariano Alvarez, leader of the Magdiwang faction in Cavite, put the cry in Bahay Toro in Quezon City of August 24, 1896. Santiago Alvarez, a Katipunero. He is the leader of Magdiwang Function, also known as Kidlat ng Apoy. Santiago was already a Delegado General of the Provincial Council of the Katipunan in Cavite. August 22, 1896, 300 men assembled. August 23, 1896, more than 500 members arrived at Bahay Turo. August 24, 1896, the cry of Bahay Turo. August 24, 1896, the Supremo decided to hold a meeting inside a big barn. About 1,000 Katipuneros arrived. The Magdiwang Function The Magdiwang Function was a chapter of the Katipunan a Philippine revolutionary organization founded by a Filipino rebels in Manila in 1892 with the aim to gain independence from Spain. The Magdiwang Council was acknowledged as the supreme organ responsible for the successful campaigns against the enemy. My name is Risa May de Los Santos from BED 2F. Different Dates and Places of the Cry Pio Valenzuela, known as Katipunero and Freebie, to many events concerning the Katipunan stated that the cry happened in Pugadlawin in August 23, 1896. Historian Gregorio Said identified the cry to have happened in Balintawa on August 26, 1896, according to a statement by Pio Valenzuela. Research by historians Milagros Guerrero, Emmanuel Incarnacio, and Ramon Villegas claim that the event took place in Tandang Sora Barn in Gulod, Barangay Banlat, Quezon City on August 24, 1896. So, si Piolo Valenzuela ay isang kinilang katipunero or we also call him secretary and he is also called a transworthy person in many events or kaganapan about sa Katipunero. Good afternoon everyone. So first, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Rose Joy Vistro Balderas from Group 4. The topic that I assigned to me is all about primary source accounts of the cry. So who is Guillermo Magsangkay? Guillermo Magsangka is a friend and advisor of Andres Bonifacio, a bosom friend of Andres Bonifacio, the founder of the Katipunan. He joined the underground society when he was only 17, was the Supremo's personal counselor. So we all know that Andres Bonifacio are the father of Katipunan. Guillermo Magsangka was 17 years old when he was the Supremo's personal counselor. On August 26, a big meeting was held in the Balintawak at the house of Apolonio Samson, then cabeza of that barrio of Caloocan. Among those who attended, I remember, were Bonifacio, Emilio Jacinto, Aguido del Rosario, Tomas Remedio, Rico Pantas, Chidoro Plata, Pio Valenzuela, Enrique Pachecho, and Francisco Carrero. They were all leaders of the Katipunan and composed the board of direction of the organization. Delegates from Bulacan, Cabanatuan, Cavite, and Morong were also presented. So who is Apolonio Samson? Apolonio Samson is Teniente Polonio of Balintawak. He is born in the year 1851 and is slain in 1902. He was a Filipino revolutionary 
who worked alongside Andres Bonifacio. And who is Andres Bonifacio? Andres Bonifacio, he is often called the father of revolution. He was one of the founder and later supreme leader of Kataas-taasan, Kagalang-galangang Katipunan ng Mga Anak ng Bayan, or commonly known as the Katipunan. He was born on November 30 and died May 10, 1897. So he, next is Emilio Jacinto. Emilio Jacinto, he was a Filipino general during the Philippine Revolution. He was one of the highest ranking officers in the Philippine Revolution. Next is Aguido del Rosario. Aguido del Rosario, he was one of the founders of the Katipunan. He was a member of the Supreme Council in 1895 and later its interior secretary in 1896. Next is Tomas Remigio, one of the fittest playwright during American period, was born in Sampaloc, Manila. Next is Brico Pantas. Brico Pantas is one of the founder of Katipunan. Next is Chudoro Plata. Chudoro Plata was a Filipino pirate and co-founder of Katipunan, secret society which sparked the Philippine Revolution against Spanish rule in 1896. Next is Pio Valenzuela. Pio Valenzuela was a Filipino physician and revolution leader at the age of 23. He joined the Society of Katipunan. Next is Enrico Pachecho. Enrico Pachecho is one of the founder of Katipunan. Next is Francisco Carreron. Francisco Carreron was a Filipino general in the Philippine Revolution against Spain and in the Philippine American War. So that's all. Thank you. Good day, everyone. I am Priscilla Arbumanek from BIA 2F, and I am reporting the continuation of the report of Miss Balianes. At about 9 o'clock in the morning of August 26, the meeting was opened with, and with Andres Bonifacio presiding and Emilio Jacinto acting as secretary. The purpose was to discuss when the uprising was to take place. It is a Katipun Katipunan or the Katipuneros having their meeting in the 9 o'clock in the morning of August 26 um, with the lead of Andres Bonifacio and Emilio Jacinto as a secretary. They want to discuss all about the uprising or the rebellion that they want to create. Chudora Plata, Bricio Pantas, and Pio Valenzuela were all opposed to starting the revolution too early. Chudora Plata was a Filipino patriot and a co-leader, co-founder of the Katipunan. Bricio Pantas served as the Secretary of Justice of the Katipunan and talk on the alias Bungahan. Pio Valenzuela or Pio Valenzuela e Alejandrino was a Filipino physician and revolutionary leader. Andres Bonifacio, sensing that he would lose in the discussion, so that he left in the session hall and talked to the people who were waiting outside for the result of the meeting of the leaders. That's all. Thank you. He told the people that the leaders were arguing against revolution early and appealed to them in a fiery speech in which he said, You remember the fate of our countrymen who were shot in Bagumbayan. Should we return now to the towns, the Spaniards will only shoot us. Our organization has been discovered and we are all marked men. If we don't start the uprising, the Spaniards will get us anyway, what then do you say? Revolt, the people shouted as one. 
Bonifacio then asked the people to give a pledge that they were to revolt. He told them that the sign of slavery of the Filipinos where the cedulas thus charge its citizens. If it is true that you are ready to revolt, I want to see you destroy your cedulas. It will be a sign that all of us have declared our severance from the Spaniards. Filipino Revolution is one of the most important events in the country history, awakening a proud sense of nationalism for generation of Filipinos to come. In a period of heavy struggle and conflict, Filipinos of different backgrounds united with a common goal to resist colonialism. Bonifacio and his fellows were planning a nationwide revolt. This led to an event called the Cry of Pugad Lawin, where revolutionaries took part in a mass clearing of cedulas or community tax certificates symbolizing their fight against Spain. Hello everyone! I discuss for today is all about Pio Valenzuela. Pio Valenzuela, Cry of Pugad Lawin in Gregorio Zayde and Sonia Zayde, Documentary Source of Philippine History, Volume 8 Manila, National Bookstore, 1990. The first place of refuge of Andres Bonifacio, Emilio Jacinto, Procorpio Bonifacio, Teodoro Plata, Arguel del Rosario, and Pio Valenzuela was in Balintawa. The first five arriving there on August 19th and I, Pio Valenzuela, on August 20, 1896. The first place where some 500 members of the Katipunan on August 22, 1896, was the house and yard of Apolinario Samson at Kangkong. Hello everyone, I discuss for today is all about Pio Valenzuela. Balintawag. Noong 1911, dito itanayo ang isang bantayog sa mga bayani noong 1896. The first cry of the Philippines Revolution of 1896 happened on August 23. 1896 at Pugadlawin, now part of the Project 8 in Quezon City, it was believed that the first cry occurred on August 26. However, the date and place of the event were contradicted. In 1963, the National Historical Commission or ang sa ngayon, ang tinatawag ay National Historical Commission of the Philippines NHCP decided that the first cry of the Philippines Revolution of 1896 happened on. Dr. Pio Valenzuela Si Dr. Pio Valenzuela, siya ay isang opisyal ng katipunan at kaibigan ni Andres Bonifacio na naroon sa kaganapan. Ang kanyang account ay naipublish bilang Memoirs of the KKK and the Philippine Revolution. Ang opisyal na petsa at lugar ng first cry ay higit pa sa nakabate sa kanyang account. Balintawag Ayon sa account ni Dr. Pio Valenzuela, ito ang unang lugar ng kanlungan ni na Andres Bonifacio, Emilio, Emilio Jacinto, Procorpio Bonifacio, Teodoro Plata, Aguido de Rosario at Dr. Pio Valenzuela. Ang unang limang pagdating doon ay noong August 19 at si Dr. Pio ay noong August 20, 1896. Bahay at bakuran ng Apolonio Samson sa Kangkong ayon sa account ni Dr. Pio Valenzuela. Ito ang unang lugar kung saan ang 500 miyembro ng katipunan ay nagpulong noong Agosto 20, 1896. Walang debate o pinagtibay. Ito ay pugadlawin sa bahay. Ito ay storehouse 
and Yard of Juan Ramos, son of Belchora Aquino. According to Dr. Pio Valenzuela accounts, this is the place where over 1,000 members of the Katipunan met and carried the considerable debate and discussion on August 20, 1896. Good afternoon, I'm Vanessa Tirado and I am Group 4. So our topic for today is all about the accounts of the cry. Aside from the person mentioned above, among those who were Brescia Pantas as the Secretary of Justice of the Katipunan and took on the alias Bungahan, he worked at the Secretario del Josgado de Quiapo. He was a member of the La, La Liga Filipina and was present at the cry of Balintawak in August 1896. Apolonio Samson Tenenteng Polonio of Balintawak, Kaloohan was born in the year 1851 and is slain in 1902. He was a re Filipino revolutionary who worked alongside by Andres Bonifacio. And Alejandro Santiago was a Filipino revolutionary who became a member of the Katipunan. Her views were only exchanged and no resolution was debated or adapted. It was a Pugad Lawin, the house, storehouse, and yard of Juan Ramos, son of Melchora Aquino, where over 1,000 members, members of the Katipunan meet and carried out. Considerable debate and discussion on August 23, 1896. So, sabi dito, si Pantas, Alejandro, Santiago, Ramon Bernardo, Apolonio Samson, at iba pa ay pinagpalit lamang ang mga pananaw na walang resolusyon na pinagtibay. At noong August 23, 1896, si Juan Ramos, na anak ni Melchora Aquino, at mahigit na isang libo na kasapi ng katipunan ay nagpulong at saka nagsagawa ng malaking dipate. At ang kanilang tinalakay ay, ay, ay ang revolusyon laban sa gobyerno ng mga Espanya. Hello everyone, this is Joshua Bedmaranda from ed 2 f The discussion was on whether or not the revolution against the Spanish government shall be started on August 29, 1896. After the tumultuous meeting, many of those present tore their cedula certificates and shouted, Long live the Philippines! Long live the Philippines! Sabi dito, kung ta Sabi dito, ang ta talakayan ay tungkol sa kung ang rebolusyon laban sa gobyerno ng Espanya ay dapat magsimula sa Agosto 29, 1896. Matapos ang magulong pagpupulong, marami sa mga dumalo ay pinulit ang kanilang sertipiko ng sedula at sumigaw ng mabuhay ang Pilipinas, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Good day everyone! The term cry is translated from the Spanish El Greto de Rebellion, or El Greto for short. The cry of Pugad Lawin, alternately and originally referred to as the cry of Balintawak, was the beginning of the Philippine Revolution against the Spanish Empire. Date, August 1896 exact date disputed location disputed officially recognized in Pugad Lawin or Balintawa officer of the Spanish Guardia Civil Lieutenant Oligario Diaz started that the cry took place in Balintawa on August 25, 1896 Historian Chudoro Kalao in his 1925 book, The Filipino Revolution, wrote the event took place last week 
of August 1896 at Kangkong, Balintawak. Santiago Alvarez, Katipunero, and son of Marciano Alvarez, the leader of the Magdiwang faction in Cavite. Started in 1927, the cry took place in Bahay Toro. Pio Valenzuela, a close associate of Andres Bonifacio, declared in 1948 that it happened in Pugad Lawin on August 23, 1896. The first cry of revolution happened in Balintawak at the house of Apolonio Samson. On August 26, 1896, 9 o'clock in the morning, the board of directors held a meeting for the final date of uprising. Bonifacio went outside the hall and talked to the people waiting outside. In his first version, he said that the time was in Balintawa on Wednesday of August 26, 1896. Later, he wrote his memoirs of the revolution and claimed that the time took place in Pugadlawi on August 23, 1896. The cry of Pugadlawi, Filipino language, sigaw ng Pugadlawi, alternately and originally referred to as the cry of Balintawa. Filipino language, sigaw ng Balintawa, Spanish, Greto de Balintawa, was the beginning of the Philippine Revolution against Spanish rule. At the close of August 1896, Members of Katipunan Secret Society, led by Andres Bonifacio, rose up and revolted somewhere in an area referred to as Kaloocan, wider than the jurisdiction of present day. Originally, the term cry referred to the first skirmish between the Katipuneros and the civil guards. Other Other divination of the term have been made over the years, but today it is popularly understood to refer to the tearing of community tax certificates by the rebels to mark their separation from Spain. This was literally accompanied by patriotic shifts. Because of differing accounts and ambiguity of place, in these accounts, The exact date and place of the cry is disputed from 1908 until 1963. The official stance was the cry occurred on August 26 in Balintawa. In 1963, the Philippines government declared a shift to August 23 in Pugad Lawin. According to Guerrero, Encarnacion and Villegas, All these places are in Balintawang, then part of Kalaokan, now in Quezon City. So, on the day of Balintawang, he was already part of Kalaokan, but now it has become part of Quezon City. So, ayon kay Mr. Guerrero, Mr. Incarnacion, and Mr. Berliagas, prominent historical researchers, mga historians, lahat ng ito ay nangyari sa Balintawang, kumbaga, sa isang lugar lang ito, but the Pugad Lawin, Bahay Toro, Kangkong, and Balintawa, ang apat na yan ay sa Balintawa lang ito nangyari. As for the dates, Bonifacio and his troops may have been moving from one place to another to avoid being located by the Spanish government, which could explain why there are several accounts of the cry. So, that explain why. Marahil nagpalipat-lipat sila ng lugar at iba't ibang araw kumpaga sa isang pangyayari. Halimbawa, sa isang picture, yung mga witnesses na ito ay they are looking at the same picture. Pero iba't ibang pananaw na iisa lang ang kinalang pinag-uusapan. So yung verdict dito, kaya maraming lugar ang sinabi dahil maraming dates ang nasabi ng mga historian. Dahil daw palipat-lipat sila ng lugar, para hindi sila basta mahuli or mahalata na tinatawag natin na gobyernong Kasila 
that explain why there are several accounts of the crime.